All right, today I'll be sharing my top tip for how I never miss low percentage precision movements. This tip is mostly for dead points where you'll try to dynamically catch holds, but the underlying principles can be applied to really any low percentage movement in general. So some quick disclaimers, sorry for not having actual footage of the climb that will be included in the story today. So this story is from back in March of 2020, which was when I wasn't as good about setting up my tripod. And as much as I would love to go back to Bishop uh, so that way I could actually get footage on this climb, Bishop is unfortunately covered in like hundreds of feet of snow right now with potholes large enough for me to stand in. So I couldn't even get to the climb even if I wanted to. Another disclaimer is that a lot of low percentage movements are going to be low percentage because of the attributes of the climber. So for example, how strong you are, how much body tension you have, and how well you can coordinate the movements are all going to be large factors in making a move low or high percentage. And similarly, the story that I'll be telling is all about how my friend Eric and I were dealing with a low percentage crux move precisely because of the climbers that we were at the time. All right, so with that, let's get into the story. Back in March of 2020, I went to visit my friend Eric, who was staying uh, in Bishop at the time, and he was working this V6 called the Clapper and the Happies. On my first night in, I decided to go out with him, uh, but I didn't want to climb too long that night because I was trying to save energy and skin for the actual things that I wanted to project. The Clapper is a pretty interesting climb. It starts off with some juggy, easy movements, and you'll end up on a fat pinch and then some live backy crimps. The wall is shaped like a wave that sort of protrudes over you, and this makes it so that way your line of vision is only the under part of the wave, and the next move, which is the crux, is doing this dynamic dead point where you want to reach past the lip and then sort of aim your fingers behind the lip by a couple inches to hit a hidden edge. This move is also done off a barn door, which also makes it pretty balancy. If you're strong enough, you can actually hit the lip, keep tension, and then bump off of it to hit the hidden edge, but at the time, we didn't have that amount of tension or coordination in, in order to do that, so we had to hit the edge directly. So the combination of the barn door plus this precision movement made this dead point very low percentage for us, and this was only compounded by the fact that we were doing this at night where your depth perception is going to be a lot worse. I gave a few attempts on it and then decided not to try too much, but after 15 minutes of watching Eric try this climb over and over again, I ended up getting pretty psyched. So I did decide to try the climb again, but I gave myself the condition that I would only give myself three attempts to try the climb. This was so that way I can make sure that I save energy and skin for the rest of my trip. So with this condition in place, I was now left thinking, well, how can I try to still send this climb in only three attempts? At this point, I was motioning the movements of the climb, which is a common practice that most climbers will do in order to help them remember the sequence prior to pulling on. Uh, but then it hit me. What if I use this motioning to slowly help me hone in on what angle I should throw my arm at in order to actually hit the hold. So prior to my first attempt, I decided to imagine there was a clock around my body and between the 12 and one o'clock hands, there would be five seconds ticks. I decided to start with the third second tick. I threw my arm in this direction at least a dozen times and that was so that way I could develop the muscle memory so that way it would be automatic. This way when I get to the crux when starting from the beginning I wouldn't have to think about it too much so that way I could just throw it directly in that direction that I had practiced. So my first attempt and I missed. I was slightly to the right. So then I thought well if I'm slightly to the right then I can move my angle to be to the second seconds tick. And so once again did a dozen or so throws in that direction making sure that I got that muscle memory down. My second go came and I actually ended up hitting the hold, but I was so shocked that I touched it that I ended up losing all my tension. It was just one of those moments where you're surprised that you actually hit it. And so because you weren't expecting to hit it, you end up having no tension going into the move. So you just kind of become limp and then fizzle out. But it was okay because I figured my next go I'd probably hit it since I now found this angle that I could reproduce in order to uh, make this move consistent. So since this was my last attempt, I decided to make sure I did another dozen or so practice throws from the ground just to make sure that the muscle memory was completely automatic because I did not want to waste my last attempt. On my third go, I was really decisive. I hit the angle of the second tick like I had planned. I latched the hold, uh, but at this point I was pretty nervous because I had never done the top out before. So, you know, heel hook, crossover, right hand up. You put the high left foot up, the sort of slopey lip. And this part was pretty scary because I only had my headlamp to illuminate. So I ended up having to pistol squat into the darkness of the night, desperately grasping for anything in every direction that I could to find a crimp. And then finally I found a good handhold um, that allowed me to pull my body up over the lip. 
and then I was able to ride the victory slab up to the top. But yeah, I definitely think this is one of my happiest memories from Bishop. Not only because I sent the problem, but because I was able to find this sort of mental strategy that I could always use for low percentage dead points. Similarly, it also taught me the impact of having a tactical and intentional approach to your projecting. Had I just kept throwing myself at this move without as much conscious thought, then it's likely that I would have lost a lot more energy, time, and skin with less certainty of even sending the problem. All right, so. The clock method is all about four things. Visualization, muscle memory, creating a system, and reproducibility. So like I said, a lot of climbers are going to be good about motioning prior to a climb in order to help them remember their sequence. But how many climbers will combine this concept of visualization with muscle memory so that way they can always make the same movement easy to reproduce? And it doesn't really matter what it is you're using to help you remember how you're doing the movement, as long as it's easy for you to remember so that way you can make it reproducible. The reason that I'm portraying this as an advanced tactic is because I don't really think that many climbers will approach precision dead points in a more tactical manner like this. Many times the prescription for how to improve at low percentage dead points is to practice low percentage dead points, or to do foot on canvassing to pockets, or to develop better body tension. And while all of those things are true, I think that the clock method is more about working smart rather than working hard. So all of these other recommendations are more about how you can practice these things for better long-term progression, but sometimes you don't really have the leeway to go back to the gym and do foot on campusing or throw yourself at problems with low percentage moves. If you're on a trip, for example, like I was, then sometimes all you can really do is think about how you can be strategic in the moment because you only have so much time. All right, so that's it for this one. I think this video is sort of in line with a lot of the other videos that I've done so far, where it's all about taking these concepts that most climbers are aware of, but trying to show you you all the different ways you can get creative with them so that way you can be able to use them to their fullest extent. In this case, it was all about how concepts like visualization and muscle memory can actually be used creatively and in a tactical manner to help you learn and reproduce these low percentage movements. If you like this one, another video you can check out is this video on footwork where I actually do a similar approach but I take three very common tips for footwork and examine the underlying principles so that way you can get more out of them than just what the basic tips are. If you liked it, then you know, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.